Perhaps the worst thing about cruising in a northern climate is by the end of the season, we all have to pull our boats out of the water and winterize them. And that usually happens around the end of October. Today, it's the middle of November, and we're gonna go for a boat ride. Why? Because this is Ranger Tug's R27, which was designed to extend your cruising season well into the colder months. Not only is the R27 capable, it is trailerable. With an eight foot six inch beam and a dry weight of 7,000 pounds, it can be trailered by a half ton truck without any special licenses or wide load permits. Outboard power has a few advantages for exploring and trailering. They can be trimmed completely out of the water and they self drain, which makes trailering in colder months much simpler. But 300 horsepower in a boat this size should make for an interesting test. More on that later. There are a few ways to get on the boat, but check out how big this platform is. Now, some outboard platforms are a bit narrow and hard to traverse, but this one's big enough that it's easy to get from side to side. Is that a ski pylon on a tugboat? Well, that is another sign this might not be a traditional tug. One of the challenges with a trailerable boat is cockpit space because the beam can be no more than eight and a half feet wide. But Ranger's R27 has two folding benches, providing enough space for four. Add a couple of deck chairs and six could easily have dinner out here al fresco. The electric grill and sink are standard, but unlike most cruisers, Ranger actually provides a dedicated spot for your propane and even includes two tanks. So there's no excuse if you run out. Below the deck, we find three storage compartments and the center one is huge. Now over here, we notice four AGM batteries totaling 440 amp hours. Now the F300 will have no problem charging these batteries, but without a gen set on board, you're gonna have to plug into shore power to run the reverse cycle heat and air conditioning system. However, we did see an interesting option on the Ranger website. A lithium powered inverter package that can run the reverse heat and air system. Another compromise to a narrow beam are narrow side decks, which can be tricky to navigate. But Ranger adds these angled gunnel extensions plus big grab rails all the way along for added security. This. 140 watt solar panel is standard equipment, and there's room for two more, which could come in handy if you opt for the big inverter and the lithium bank. Forward, we find an extra tall stainless railing, a top mount Lumar windlass with foot pedal controls, and even a hatch to untangle the road. But the very cool feature is this double wide bench seat, which is elevated off the deck to make it really, really comfortable. The only thing missing is someone to enjoy the sunrise with. Stash the cushions and this seat folds flat to ensure a clear view from the helm. All of the teak you see here is real and it has a warmth that synthetics just can't match. The galley features a full stove with two burner cooktop, full oven and plenty of storage. Flipping the passenger seat forward adds a bit more counter space. Removing the cutting board reveals a large stainless sink and just below, we find a reasonably large fridge, and just across under the helm seat is the microwave. To fit a four-person dinette and a full galley in a boat that is trailerable took some thinking. And first, the teak table folds to expose a grab rail and a couple of extra cup holders. And both backrests pivot, so this one doubles as a helm seat. And if that weren't enough, below, we find a single berth. Opening the aft window will allow more fresh air in while allowing someone to enjoy the action in the cockpit. Forward, we find a well-lit standing wet head to starboard with a shower, vacuum flush toilet, glass sink, and more of that beautiful warm teak. To port, there is a small hanging closet and secure location for a Keurig style coffee maker. The forward V berth is roomy with plenty of headroom. It is also well lit and has plenty of screened hatches for ventilation. A Garmin 8612 chart plotter with sonar, radar, and autopilot will help you go anywhere in almost any weather. Yamaha's digital instruments and controls allow precise control over the engine while providing all the information you might need at a glance. The bow thruster is standard equipment and a must have on a single outboard powered boat. The 4.2 liter F300 is the most powerful V6 in Yamaha's lineup. At only 558 pounds, it is both light and fuel efficient. Time to plane is right around six and a half seconds. We get to 30 miles an hour in under 11 seconds. That's right, 30 miles an hour. And we blow right past it. Oh, so close. I'm pretty confident she'll do 40 if you lighten the load a little. But 40 miles an hour 
This is not your average tug. And if we trim the motor up, we can actually get ourselves a bit of a rooster tail. So we're still doing 24 miles an hour. Let's trim her down. And see how the hull handles a bit of turn. This is supposed to be a tug? Now, the only thing I can tell you is I do lose sight of the horizon a little bit with the roof, but those atrium windows are actually perfectly positioned for me to see through while we're turning. Look at this. I don't believe it. But I'll tell you what, the ride is very, very smooth. You notice the bow has a very fine entry point. So when you are running at displacement speeds or subplaning speeds, it's gonna slice through the waves nicely. When we get it up on top, it still rides really well, but it definitely feels so solid. But I think what's really most interesting about this boat is the fact that you can trailer it. And that really changes the game as to where you might want to consider boating. I mean, it opens up all of North America. We can literally put this boat in a trailer and be in Vancouver or Seattle in a couple of days. I mean, can you imagine? Alaska, here we come.